Thanks, Alesh. And with that, let's welcome Patricia As with the uh, talk, I can't work like this. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so, thank you for having me. And good morning. I'd like to welcome you uh, to Bugs as a Service. This will be our company for this morning. Uh, Bugs as a Service makes uh, a bug tracker A++. It's a fancy company, um, but it's a very small company. It's a small team. Let me also introduce our problem. Our problem is here represented as a purple ball. We don't know much about this problem. Uh, we aren't really sure if it's a serious problem. We're not exactly sure if it is a problem at all. And if it is a problem, we're not exactly sure if we have to fix it right now, or if it's easy to fix, or even if it will take a long time to fix. So it's a very, very unclear problem that we have. Now let's say that we could place that problem in some sort of system. So let's say that we could say it was a red problem or a yellow problem or a blue problem or a green problem. Maybe if we could classify the problem somehow, uh, that would tell us something. But maybe how we solve problems tells us more about the problem itself. Like maybe we could distinguish different problems from each other by thinking about how we solve problems. So down here, let's imagine that we have crisis. Now this could be like an everyday crisis, like um, a house full of three-year-olds, for example. These are unfolding crises, like stuff will happen. You can't just sit down and pretend it's not there. Things will happen. Like if your house is burning down, you can pretend it's not, but it will burn to the ground. So these are things that if you not, don't do anything about it, it will resolve itself and probably not in a way that you like. Now up here, we have other types of problems. Now these are problems that you, you, you don't necessarily know what the problem is or how to solve it. So you kind of have to experiment, try out different things, debug, trying to learn. So there's a lot of unknowns in this scenario. Uh, so a lot of, of, of detective work to try to figure things out. Whereas up here you have really nice problems, delineated problems. You know what the problem is. You know how to solve the problem. You're not really worried about that. You know that the problem can be solved. Now you're thinking more, what is the best way to solve these kinds of problems? Like there are several ways, but what is the best way for us? Maybe there's this, you know, you, you have a, you have a, a tradition of, 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 of engineering, of best practices that you want to apply to the problem. Down here, we have great, wonderful problems. These are problems that are solved with automation and routine. These are problems we know exactly how to do. We just have to do it. You know, sometimes we might realize that there's some bug in our automation or, or maybe some steps missing from our checklist. But this is stuff that we can fix so that next time we do it better. But we know how to solve these problems. Now you have certain people that tend to work in parts of this. And, and, and so, so this, this system, by the way, is, is uh, often called the Kinevin framework. It's made by a guy named Dave Snowden. And he, he talks about it as a sense-making framework. And he has like names for these different things. So down here, he calls this a chaotic domain. And this is the complex domain. And here is the complicated domain. And down here is the clear domain. So they, they, they have names. But I want to talk about more about the people who work there. So you have certain people who tend to work mostly in one domain. Uh, so here we have Ellis. He works for, for Bugs as a Service. Ellis started off his career as a, as a graphical designer. Then now he's, his official title is probably UX designer. Uh, but he does all things design and creative at this very small team at Bugs as a Service. He's a very creative person. He probably would he wants to be a, an artist maybe and he likes to play music so he actually has a soundcloud just in case you know a tweet goes viral at some point um and it, and he he likes to to try to figure out what is the best thing for the users and 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 does a lot of like off the wall thinking and and just throwing ideas out there 
Now up here is Alex. Alex does not throw ideas out there. That's not what he does. He will throw solutions out there. If you give him a problem, he will try to give you a solution. Alex is also a little bit tired of his job. Uh, he's more interested in the stuff that he does at home. And at home he does, he likes to play uh, video games and he also likes to do a home automation and all sorts of like little pet projects and open source stuff that he has going on. And that's really what keeps him going because he kind of thinks his job is a little bit boring. But down here we have Bailey and Bailey loves her job. Bailey loves her job because it basically means that she can make order out of chaos. So Bailey is an SRE or a site reliability engineer, but she used to be just called a sysadmin. Her basic, basic role, she feels like, is just to keep the world from go, descending into chaos. Uh, so everything has to have a system. There should be order. She's not a big fan of, of, of Ellis's off the wall ideas either. She thinks uh, that we should have a plan and we should follow it and no one should be all too creative about the world. Down here we have Parker. Parker is an instant responder. And this means that Parker has a very strange kind of personality. So when the world is on fire, Parker is smiling. When everyone feels like, oh my gosh, and everyone is super stressed out, Parker is like, finally, my moment is here. So Parker will smile at in the most inopportune moments where things really are not to be smiled about. But you have also people that don't really know where they belong. Like here, we have Finley. Now Finley was a dad, but then Finley got a promotion. Finley's not exactly sure that being a tech lead was a promotion because now Finley feels like most of her time is being spent in meetings and she actually really liked to code. But being in this complex domain, in this creative domain, uh, is, is necessary for Finley because she has to balance the role of trying to figure out what is the right system to build versus how to build the right system, which is her dev side. And so balancing what should we make with how should it be made is, is a, a part of her role. Uh, you also have Oakley. Oakley is a senior dev. And one of the things that Oak has been working hard on lately is automation. So working on the CI CD pipeline, making sure that, you know, that when we push things to production, they work properly. Also making sure that there's a, there's a, an infrastructure uh, that, that can be easily put up and pulled down and, and all of those things. So, so that's more in the, in the clear domain where, where Oakley has been working with the automation. In the, in the clear domain, you also find Kian, who does, uh, who does QA. QA means that Kian is basically everywhere all the time. Kian is non-binary and uses they, them pronouns. Uh, and Kian loves to figure things out and actually quite enjoys when there is a disaster in some way together with Parker, just because finally, I guess, uh, things really went as badly as Kian always worries about. It's a strange thing. Kian worries constantly. When, when things actually go bad, Kian kind of likes it. Um, also, Kian likes to investigate things. And maybe that's why Kian likes it when things are bad, because that, that means that Kian can run around and figure things out, what actually went wrong. Uh, and, and a little bit, you know, making order out of chaos there. So let's take a look at our team. So we have Parker, our instant responder, Keen, our QA, Bailey, our, our site reliability engineer, Oakley, our senior dev, Alec, our dev, Finley, our tech lead, and Ellis, our designer. And together, they are the parts of Bugs as a Service, our company. Oh yeah, uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, I, I almost forgot. Um, this here, this is uh, Jeff. Uh, Jeff is our sales guy. He talks on the phone a lot and smiles a lot and speaks really loudly a lot. Oh yeah, and, and uh, yeah, here, here's, this is Brad. Um, Jeff talks a lot with Brad on the phone because Brad is the customer. Okay, so 
the Saturday. And today, all of these people are going to have a really bad day. So welcome to my talk. I can't work like this. And also welcome to KDE Academy 2021. My name is Patricia Ellis. I'm a trainer and a consultant. I'm a C++ programmer. I've been programming now in C++ for about 15 years. Um, I've been specializing lately in application security. Uh, and I work for a company that I co-founded called TurboSec. I, my first job was uh, on uh, the original Opera browser, uh, where actually we were working in the, in the floor uh, above Trolltech at the time. Uh, then I went over to, to uh, do some Java consulting for a little while, and then went to Cisco, where I made embedded, embedded child pressing systems, also using Cube up there. Uh, then I went back to my game browser again at Vivaldi, and when I have time, I work on a pet project of mine, which is making a browser as well. So I guess I have a thing about browsers. Um, I have a master's degree in computer science, and my pronouns are she, her. But back to our heroes. OK, so Kian is our QI. Um, Kian is always bored. That is, is sort of Kean's default state of mind, where Kean is always worried, mostly about worried about whether something is Kean's fault. Um, but in this case, Kean's worry actually helped, because Kean being worried, Kean had started making all sorts of little monitors for production uh, to see if weird things were going on, because Kean gets less worried if there's monitoring in production. Uh, but this morning, early on a Saturday morning, one of the monitors kicked in and it says data exfil threshold exceeded. Hmm. Okay, so we have an alert in production. Kian starts looking into the logs, trying to figure out what is it that had happened. And they do look weird. So Kian pays the rest of the team on Slack. I think something's wrong. Someone seems to be pulling a lot of data off the, off the server. We might have a problem. I mean, seems like a problem. So in comes Oakley, who's been chilling on the couch, reading a book. She takes a look at the logs and yeah, they do, they, they, they do look odd, right? So she logs into the server and has a look around to see what's running there. And Hmm. This does not look normal. Okay, so she thinks Bailey. We need a, an SRE eye on this. Bailey is not happy because Bailey was building IKEA shelves, and Bailey takes building IKEA shelves very seriously. Following instructions is Bailey's favorite. Uh, but she does have notification uh, on Slack on at all times with sound loud and. She responds to the call. She catches up what's been going on, and then she says, but nothing's happened. It's Saturday. Everything was fine yesterday, which is not something that makes, feel Bailey good, makes Bailey feel good, because Bailey does not like weird things happening in production. But the truth is, something is off, right? Performance is down, and massive amounts of data is being pulled off the server. So. Something's going on. We have a problem. And it is unfolding as we speak. So this isn't really an unknown class of problem anymore. This is clearly a problem in the chaotic domain. We still don't know anything, and it is unfolding. So we have a problem in the chaotic domain. Hmm. OK, so in comes Parker our incident responder. She pops in, takes one look at everything that's been going on, and then goes <laughs> straight to Bailey and says, take the site and the server offline immediately. Then she hops on a Slack thread with Keen and Bailey, and they need to figure this stuff out because something is seriously wrong. But our first set of heroes have done a very important thing, and especially Parker, 
They moved the problem from the chaotic domain into the complex domain. They did this very simply by taking the server offline. Uh, by by do, taking the server on the site offline, they got to put a pause button on the problem. It was no longer unfolding. It was giving them time to have a look at the problem. So we're not blaming data anymore. We still don't know what was going on. We don't know what has happened, but at least we know that it has stopped happening. Whatever was going on is not currently happening. So we have some time to try to figure it out. And so our heroes managed to move the problem from the chaotic domain into the complex domain. In comes Ellis, our designer, and Finley, our tech lead. Now they are here for a totally different reason. They also pop into Slack, but for something completely different. They have alerts on the Twitter account uh, for, for bugs as a service. And they've been at it on Twitter with some weird tweets. Um, cryptic tweets, really. First one shows up um, at 8, 8 a.m. Says, we got your data. And then, like, are you still sleeping? And then bugs as a service doesn't care about their customer, it seems. Very strange. The catching up, Finley starts to worry that this has something to do with what, what is currently being uh, debugged, what is currently being investigated, right? So she jumps in uh, and tries to debug the system on a Zoom call with Oakley. And they just, they also ping Alec to join them because, you know, something is going on and we need to figure it out. But Alex is busy. Alex is gaming. And Alex does not want to work on a Saturday. And, ah, uh, but he sees the pain, right? So he's like, ah, okay, fine. I'll come debug with you. But come on, it's Saturday. So they all sit down on the Zoom call all trying to, to mob debug this problem, trying to figure out what is, what is going on here. Meanwhile, Ellis is diving deep into the Twitter sphere, trying to figure out what is going on with these tweets. Like, does this person or the people know anything? Do they actually have any data? What is going on? Um, in comes Brad, the customer. Brad is not happy. Brad is having a bad Saturday morning as well. So he calls Jeff, our sales guy, who is trying to be chipper. Brad is screaming, what is going on? The server is offline. We can't get any work done. What kind of terrible product are you people making? And Jeff was like, oh, I'm not sure it's nothing. <laughs> well, let me check with the team. Don't worry. It's, we'll get it back in a jiffy. <laughs> but Finley, Oakley, and Alec, they're still sitting around trying to debug this problem uh, when Jeff turns up in the Zoom call. And Jeff <laughs> is not happy on a Saturday morning either. Jeff starts screaming to everyone, what is going on? I've got the client on the phone. He says the server's offline. I need info ASAP. Suddenly nobody's doing anything anymore. All we have is a Zoom call where Jeff is just screaming at everyone to do something, but nobody can do anything because Jeff is screaming. Uh, and and Truth of the matter is, Alec didn't want to be here anyway. Alec wanted to be home gaming, and it's not working out for Alec. And now it's someone screaming at him for something that Alec believes strongly is not his fault. But Alec gets angry. Listen, we're trying to work here. Be quiet. Leave us alone. We're actually trying to get to fix your problem, but we can't do anything as long as you're screaming. But Jeff, Jeff is, is not having it. I have a paying customer on the line. I need answers now. Jeff thinks that solving problems is something that you can do by yelling at people. 
so, so the idea here is that if you yell more at people, they will do more things. Unfortunately, that doesn't really actually work the way that Jeff thinks it does. And the thing is, Alec is not having it anymore. He is sick and tired. It's early Saturday morning. He was having a good day, and now everyone is screaming, and he can't get his job done, and he is sick and tired of this job anyway. And so he just screams right back. I can't work like this. It's clear somebody has to defuse the situation. So Finley steps in, being tech lead, that's sort of her role. And she takes Jeff off the call and sits down with him on a separate Zoom call. Ah, and meanwhile, the, the customer is still screaming on Jeff's phone, which is making Jeff like, so kind of um, aggressive. Uh, but for me now, she can't participate in the debugging anymore because now she has to manage, uh, manage Jeff and, and Brad's feelings because they clearly can't handle the situation and I keep on screaming and yelling. Meanwhile, though, Ellis has been diving into these tweets and he has come to the conclusion that they are fake. Like, even though we have an ongoing situation with something going on with data, these are these these people don't have any data. And and it was just an accident that it came at the same time. So basically, we're not too worried about the tweets anymore. Also, Keen has made some discoveries. Someone, we're not saying who, but it was totally Alec. I committed uh, the server credentials to the open GitHub repo. And, but, but the thing is, luckily, there's no, not, no sensitive uh, information there. There's all, everything that's there is just stuff that you could have pulled off, scraped off the website anyway. So whatever these people are pulling off the server, it's not sensitive and nobody really cares. So the situation isn't as bad as it seems, but it's still kind of embarrassing because, you know, it is what it is. But through this, this, this process with Ellis investigating the tweets and Key and looking at, at uh, the Git logs, um, they have discovered what the problem is and they have moved the problem from being in the complex domain into the complicated domain. And the complicated domain is the perfect domain for software developers because now we know what to do. So we have, we have, leaked data, but the data was not sensitive. So we don't really care about that. But the intruder had access to the server and that we don't want. So we move the problem into the complicated domain, but it's not finished. We still have stuff to do. Uh, but the heroes for moving, moving our problem this time uh, is Elixir Designer and Key and RQF. So they managed to figure out what was going on and move the problem into the complicated domain. Okay, so back to the Zoom call. Finley is back uh, together with Oakley and Alec. Now the problem is, is at least clear. We know what the problem is. And so together uh, they discuss well, how it should be fixed. So they form a plan. The first one isn't really necessary, but they really want to remove the creds from Git history, mostly because they find it embarrassing and also because um, is a bit embarrassed about the whole thing. Uh, but they also need to bring a new server instance online, instance online with new credentials and everything and bring the site back up. So Oakley, Alec, and Finley have made a plan. And by making that plan, have basically decided that the problem should be solved through automation by bringing up the site again. So they have moved the problem into the clear domain. So our heroes this time, I move the problem down here. Excellent. Okay, so down there we have our, a new set of heroes. So we have Oakley, our senior dev, who's been working with Bailey, our SRE, for a long time before this on automation. And, and they, have, they have a system for, for taking down and bringing up the site on new instances. Uh, and they have key in to, to do their initial testing. So they, they take the, they use what they already had 
and they get a new server instance online, point all the traffic towards it, bring up both the site and the server online again, and Kian does the initial testing on the live website and thumbs up, bugs as the service is back. You know, now, now Brad, the customer, should be happy, which would make Jeff, the, the sales guy, happy again, and, and that everyone can go back to having a happy Sunday or Saturday. Um, so we had a problem in the clear domain, but it could be solved in the clear domain. Uh, and we moved it all the way there by moving it from chaos to complex to complicated and finally to clear. And we managed to fix it. So our hero is in the clear domain managed to, to bring the site back up and bugs as a service is back. Now, the thing is that this model with these, uh, these four domains don't really uh, reflect what we did today uh, because most problems start as unknowns and then they move. So we started off with a purple problem, which is basically saying we don't exactly know where this problem belongs. It was only after a little bit of an investigation, it turns out that this problem was in the chaotic domain. And then that's where we pulled in our crisis management, right? So this is where Parker took the site offline and where we had some time to debug the problem in the complex domain. Um, once we figured out what the problem was, we moved the problem into the complicated domain where we could use our, our engineering experience, our good practice, everything that we know how to do uh, to figure out a good plan to fix it. And ended up that the fix was actually in the clear domain with automation and routine. Now, if you look at the Kinevin framework, how, how Dave Snowden draws it, he draws it more like this. Uh, and so, what we have here is this little space in the middle where we can put things that are unknown. So this is our unknown problem. In our case, we figured out that it was in the chaotic domain, we moved it into the complex domain, then into the complicated, and then finally into the clear where we solved it. But any problem, when it starts up, we don't know where it belongs, and it could end up in any domain. It's just in our case, it ended up being in the chaotic domain because it was unfolding. So now sitting back afterwards, let's do a little bit of a, of a think about what happened in our process. So Alec and Finley sit down, have a cup of coffee. Let's do a little bit of a retrospective, you know, a postmortem on this problem. What is it really that we need to learn from this? So Alex, uh, Alec asked Finley, he's like, what is, what is the underlying lesson here? What should we learn from this? Like, how can we, how can we use this to become better in the future? And uh, Finley, don't push credits to GitHub. I mean, you know. <laughs> but Alex says, no, really, like, what, what, what should we learn from this? Because there must be a lesson here for us. Um, and maybe be, folks being different isn't, isn't a bug. Maybe that is actually the feature. Because what we saw here is that people thinking differently and acting differently in different situations, people being used to different kinds of problems, were contributing to the problem being moved uh, through the different domains to finally ending up in a situation that we could fix. Um, it, it, it is... If you look at this, this chaotic domain, people who operate in the chaotic domain, who like to, to operate in the chaotic domain, they are generally decisive people, people who walk in and kind of boss people around. And in most situations, you don't like people like that. They're very annoying people. Uh, but when there is an unfolding crisis, you want someone to take, take initiative, to take uh, some kind of leadership role. It feels really comforting when things are falling apart around you, to look at a person who seems to know what they're doing. And, and, and oftentimes that, that role is not so important that they actually know what they're doing as long as they can act confidently. And, and people who are used to working in the chaotic domain, they have that, that uh, calmness in a crisis where they can walk in and, and look around, see what is essential right here and now, and, and, and move on that information. 
So, so for example, a first responder who walks up to, to someone who's been in an accident, looks them over and, and, and thinks, what is going to kill this person first? I mean, what, in looking over a house full of three-year-olds going, okay, so how can we get the situation under control? Um, looking at uh, a house on fire going, okay, so first of all, we need to stop the fire. We can worry about what caused the fire later, but we have to stop the fire first uh, or stop the fire from spreading. This kind of, of, of drilling down into the essentials are the kinds of, 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 uh, of qualities that you need in people who operate in the chaotic domain. Um, in the complex domain, you have the people who, who are creative, who are out of the box thinkers, but, and, and, and they, there's a system to the madness, but it, it might seem very off the wall to people looking at it. It is a creative process. It involves a lot of back and forth trying things out and finding things that don't work. It, it's not a structured process and it can frustrate people so much, especially people who are used to being in the compli complicated domain or in the clear domain. Uh, because people in the compli complicated domain, they like structure, they like systems. Like you, if, you would, if you look at developers who move between the complex and the complicated domain, People in the complex domain, that's where you make your prototypes. That's where you try stuff out. That's where you do your first bring up just to see if it works. Um, whereas in the complicated domain, you, you, you have a plan and you follow through. Uh, but even though it's like, if you have a bug uh, that you don't know much about, you might start off in the complex domain by just by debugging, just investigating, trying to figure out what is going on. But once you know what the bug is, you move into the complicated domain where you're like, how should I fix this? It becomes a, a well-defined problem. And people who are used to operating in the complicated domain can be very frustrated with people who work in the complex domain and vice versa. People in the complex domain are creative. People might feel like they're not allowed their creativity when people want them to tell them exactly how things should have been done in advance. And they're like, I don't know, I have to try. Um, but probably the most frustrated person with people in the complex domain, and maybe also with the complicated domain, are people who are used to working in the clear domain. These are people who are used to solving their problems with automation and routine and process. They do not like all of this like back and forth changing stuff. Uh, and they definitely are not fans of, of complex people who are too much imagination and too much creativity and too much throwing things at the wall and see what sticks. People in the clear domain don't like that. They like like a plan, a system, and and they want a, a, they want everything to be running perfectly smoothly all the time. The best thing would be if everyone would just like stop moving for like five minutes so that things could just work. Now, when it comes down to what should we learn from this, I think Kian is actually <laughs> uh, of a different opinion. Uh, so, so Kian thinks that the real lesson here is that you should never underestimate QA. They know where all the bodies are buried. Because it was Kian that actually managed to dig out that someone, <clears throat> Alec, uh, checked in the credentials to, uh, to GitHub. And, and by doing that, Kian was managed to move the problem from the complex domain into the complicated domain. No, all of the devs were sitting around trying to debug the problem, but none of them actually found what Kian found. Uh, and, and one of the special things about QA that you might have noticed here is Kian is operating all over the place. Uh, both, uh, both in the automation, uh, in the clear domain, and also in, in the crisis, it was actually Kian that, uh, that discovered the problem in the first place. Uh, so that Parker could come in and, and get that decisiveness uh, and, and uh, shut down the servers. Um, but it was the, the, the investigation that Kian kept on doing because Kian kept on digging. And some people are like that. They are just super curious people and they just want to know. And, and that, keep, that digging was actually the ones that saved the day to actually bringing the real bug into, into the light and making it possible to fix it. And also later for Kian to, to test it. 
So, so Keen was the one that was kind of running around all over the place, uh, but not really getting a lot of credit for getting stuff done. And some people are like that. They are enablers in their teams, uh, but they don't necessarily get the recognition that they need. Uh, they are, they practice their work by making other people better. Uh, and and some, some of those, those roles are not necessarily well recognized. Keen does not make a, a big deal out of themselves. Keen, Keen will, will instead dig up little nuggets of information here and there, giving it to people to, to then run with it. So we have our company, Bugs as a Service. With Kian down here, who is the all over the place kind of person, uh, Bailey, who is the one that will structure everything to make sure it works, to, to get everything in line and to make sure it works every day the way it should. We have Parker, who, you know, it's, it's fun to have a system and it's fun to be creative, but what is really fun is when everything's on fire. Uh, which means uh, Parker will be the, the inappropriate smiling person at any kind of disaster area. But that is what Parker loves to do. Oakley is super happy, both with, with being able to build things, but also to be working together with Bailey to, to find uh, good automation uh, steps to make the whole uh, development process smooth. Because Oakley believes pushing to production is the best thing. So making sure that that is safe is something that Oakley really appreciates. Ellis, our designer. Now, he is the creative spirit in all of this and totally underrated by most other people because people don't realize that the, that the creativeness that Ellis brings to the table is actually what makes Bugs as a Service so popular. It is what makes uh, Brad, the customer, be so angry because it actually matters that the site is online. And that has a lot to do with Alice's empathy and, and how Alice can relate to, to the end user. Um, and then we have Alec, who sometimes kind of misses the ball at work, but mostly because Alec might not be as challenged as he should be. He's not having enough uh, fun at work. He's not really feeling inspired these days. And that's something maybe his colleagues could help him. Uh, maybe he needs to be challenged more, given more responsibility, given, given a chance to, to use those skills that he clearly has uh, to, to grow more at work. Uh, and then we have Finley, our tech lead, who managed to juggle these roles of hers uh, from being this, this kind of a people person who has to manage a team, but also manage and manage the, the sales guy, Jeff, and, and the customer, Brad, and, and manage them when they uh, went off being very angry uh, and managed to pull them off the team so that the team actually managed to solve the problem. And sometimes that is a huge job of being the buffer between the anger and the people who are solving the problem. And, and Finley really pulled that off. Unfortunately, that meant that Finley couldn't really participate much in the solving of the problem. And that is the story for today. It's a story about a team uh, building something together and, and solving problems as a group. And what I hope that you bring from this is that sometimes you might look around at your colleagues and be annoyed. You might be, um, maybe you're an Alec, maybe you're a little bit disgruntled with your work, but most of the time you're just annoyed that people are, are just, they don't have a proper plan. And so what I'm hoping that you will look at this and think, okay, actually all of these people participated together to fix the problem on Saturday morning, working from home, from their couches, they managed to bring it all together, not, not, uh, despite their differences, but because of their differences. And, and, and that is something that I, I hope that we can all bring, bring together uh, and, and to see that we, even though we're different, uh, we can all bring uh, our whole selves to work. And by doing that, uh, we can make our, our whole teams and our whole organizations better. 
So um, thank you so much for listening. Um, and that is my talk. Thank you very much, Patricia, for this for this talk. Um, it uh, seems that uh, we have a Q&A widget uh, yeah. for the attendees to to use. Yeah. Um, and also, maybe we can encourage them to ask in the chat. Yes. If if that's not a problem, there's a small delay in the stream, so let's uh, give them a moment or two to type the questions in either the widget or the chat, and we'll uh, we'll. See. So, so the chat is that the KD um, Matrix channel? Yeah, the Academy Talks one. That's the one everyone is watching uh, at right now. Okay, the chat is full of applause so far, but also in the widget I see the very first question. Yes, from please. from uh, Kai. What was the name of the underlying model again? Oh, Kinevan framework. Uh, so it's, it's written like Cinefin with a C and a Y. It's a, it's apparently a, a Welsh word. Uh, <laughs> so so he's been working on it for. I think like 10 years, uh, Dave's, Dave's known. It's very interesting, uh, and he has lots of interesting talks about it, so I really encourage you to, to, to look at those. OK, thanks. Uh, I can also bring it back. Uh, let's see if I can, I can also bring yeah. it back, actually, so we can oh, have a look. So, someone already linked it in the, ah, uh, in the chat, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. IP <laughs> wizard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I I don't have the chat right here, so if if there's uh if there's questions, please read them to me. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm looking at the chat. So far, mostly applause and thank yous, and no further questions yet. <laughs> One of the things that I, I, I found really interesting about this model was mostly this, uh, this realization that people are, are used to different kinds of problems and, and that being used to different kinds of problems like here, uh, let's see if they have these here, being used to different kinds of problems means that you approach problems in different ways. Like Parker is, is a very decisive kind of uh, take charge kind of person and, and and that kind of personality works really well in a crisis but it doesn't work very well if you're in the middle of a creative process if you're trying to figure out what should we do should we do this or this then if somebody comes in and was like tries to decide it breaks the entire process and you can't and, and you might end up with a suboptimal uh, solution because what you need here is more of a facilitator, like trying to figure out, get people to talk and bring those ideas out and, and spin off other people's ideas to try to nail what is that, what, it, what is a good solution for us. Um, and, it, uh, and, and so, and, and when you go into the, to the, to the, the, the complicated domain, it's more about what is the best way to solve the problem? We don't want to be too creative. We want to follow best practices. We want to be, um, we want to be structured. And 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 there you might have like your test-driven development, and you have like a certain flow of things. And and people there are not too fond of the whole creative process either. <laughs> uh, and then in, you know, in the clear domain where Bailey is, is like. You know, it's mostly about uptime, keeping things together. It's like we don't want to have a complicated system for anything. We want to make sure it's the push of a button and everything just works. And and people who are used to working in different domains have different kinds of personalities, but they're all needed to make a good feature or a good product. Uh, and I think we fight too much uh, without actually realizing that we are being different is good. <laughs> okay, um, I don't see further questions, but in case people do want to ask you later something, do you have any contact information 
Or... Yeah, no, no, you can uh, you can uh, reach me on Twitter. Uh, my uh, my handle is here, so it's uh, Patti underscore uh, Gallardo uh, on Twitter, and uh, my DMs are open as well. Uh, so so just uh, just uh, ping me whenever. Oh, uh, one one question did uh, came, came up uh, while you were showing the Twitter handle. Where would the salesperson go? With solving problems by yelling strategy. <laughs> I, I I think if you ask Jeff, like I think Jeff would say that he is up here with Alec, like he's a reasonable man with like a reasonable plan. Uh, but the but the truth is uh, he's probably more over here in the creative domain where he he's more. But but it doesn't really have the tools I think to 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 do the actual design. So it's more of of a of a of an instinct that you know I I want people to stop yelling so I will yell at other people which is a, is a really bad solution to a problem. <laughs> um, so so probably more of a personality like Parker would have been better in that role like being able to just be calm and like somebody's yelling at you and you're like yeah yeah I understand that you're angry we're looking into it you know. <laughs> And not have, not reacting by just turning around and yelling at somebody else, which is not really constructive. So yeah, yeah, I definitely think he's a, he's a little bit off the charts. See. <laughs> okay, I think that's it for the questions. Uh, again, thank you very much, Patricia, for the thank talk. Thank you for having me. <laughs>